The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome. We're going to be starting in another moment. We're just going to give a few more people um, a minute or two to go ahead and log in. Thank you so much for attending. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started. My name is Sal Catalano. I am a Sage Senior Solutions Consultant. And today we're gonna to be going over Sage and Tech planning for the hospitality services industry. So today we're gonna to be going over a, giving you a bit of an overview of the product. Uh, we'll talk about financial planning and analysis, which is where this tool takes budgeting to that next level. And then we'll go into the demo. I have a colleague that will be monitoring the chat and questions. So please feel free to ask questions and we'll do our best to get them answered to you during the webinar. Okay. All right. Uh, so embracing the motto of if we live, we plan. Sage and Tech Planning becomes your invaluable tool to kickstart your planning process to quickly and effectively become your solution and help you hit the ground running to embark on your planning journey with confidence. Uh, Sage and Tech Planning revolutionizes the planning process by offering a cloud-based solution that eliminates the drawbacks of uncontrolled, inflexible, and insecure spreadsheets. Instead, it provides a real-time single source of truth, empowering businesses like yourselves to make agile and confident decisions. By leveraging our platform, organizations can say goodbye to the limitations and risks associated with spreadsheets. They gain access to a dynamic planning environment that ensures data accuracy, consistency, and security. With real-time updates and a centralized repository of information, businesses can make informed decisions quickly and easily. Many of our customers rely on our solution to enhance their annual planning process and augment it with monthly forecasting with our platform. They can gain instant access to powerful what-if scenarios, enabling them to make informed decisions on the fly. Additionally, our system allows you to create driver-based models with remarkable granularity, going down to individual employee level or any other detail that is necessary for your organization. By integrating seamlessly with Sage and Tech Core Financials, planning provides a holistic experience. Customers can easily access comprehensive reporting and analysis, enabling them to gain valuable insights into their financial performance. Our platform empowers businesses to streamline their planning procedures, leverage monthly forecasts, and harness the power of what-if scenarios, all while being connected to Sage and Tech Core Financials. Our core features revolve around being able to save you a lot of time, to be agile and allow you to move and make decisions quickly as your company grows or simply respond to any market changes. For example, as a hospitality organization, you may want to increase services. Imagine how easy it would be to create a scenario that includes the revenues for that new hotel or restaurant uh, and provide you with the information on staffing requirements or other resources. And what if there's a risk of losing revenue? You can simply create a scenario and see in real time how those changes will affect the budget. Another core feature is that you can always trust the numbers. You can feel confident that numbers are rolling up correctly without having to worry about whether or not there are any mistakes in your formula of your Excel document. In my professional or prior professional life, I should say, I spent over a decade in the finance department of various industries 
And I got to admit that sometimes I used to spend more time putting and checking my formulas than I did creating budgets. It happened only once where my formula became corrupted because I shared the budget with a department head and he inadvertently changed something that threw off all of my calculations. It was a nightmare. I think most of you can relate to how we guard our Excel spreadsheets. Um, my favorite feature is also to be able to collaborate in real time with other directors and department heads and other budget stakeholders. Imagine having the right people access planning, make changes, provide supporting details, roll up those numbers to appropriate categories, then take those numbers and bring them back to the GL for budget to actual analysis. I remember my finance team used to spend a couple of hours a week communicating with department heads and managers to provide them with budget to actual balances when this data can be available through a dashboard. Sage and Tech planning is easy to use, whether your stakeholders have a strong financial background or not. They can participate and be responsible for how they run their budgets. These features will truly take the accountant role and elevate it to a more proactive approach to financial planning and analysis. You're no longer working on your budget only during budget season. With Sage and Tech Planning, you can devote a few hours a month and be ready to make changes quickly and easily. When we think of, about what sets Sage and Tech Planning apart from other planning software, we lead with these four items, self-discoverable, connected, powerful, and collaborative. And what we mean by being self-discoverable is the ease of setup and use. Typical planning and budgeting users want a tool that is easy to deploy. The intuitive and user-friendly tools are designed to be fully managed by the finance end user with no need for IT or admins to ever get involved. The connected feature speaks to the user-friendly planning wizard, which provides an intelligent mapping and syncs with your Sage and Tech Core financials. If your organization does not have a dedicated financial planning and analysis resource, these functions are being carried out by the controller or finance managers. And then the bi-directional integration between planning and Sage and Tech Core means that you can make changes to a scenario and quickly and easily merge that new scenario back into your core financials. The powerful driver-based modeling, what if scenarios and rolling forecasts let you see the impact of your decisions immediately. Imagine being in a budget meeting and being able to update and create what if scenarios on the fly. You know, think about how quickly any decision can be made if that data that supports your assumptions is updated in real time where everyone can see the results immediately. And then finally, the collaborative nature of the tool allows you to engage with the right people, the right data at the right time. And I like to add a fifth item to this to mention its affordability. You get world-class planning functionality software that is priced 50% lower than most competitors. If you think about how much time is spent on budgeting and planning, this will pay for itself. Not having to be concerned with errors that are inherent with Excel, for example, or being approached by the CEO about making a small change in assumptions revolutionizes the financial planning and analysis process. When we talk about the connection between planning and Sage and Tech, we have what we call this bi-directional integration. And that meaning that information flows either from the planning tool into Sage and Tech or from Sage and Tech into planning. It's important to note that the integration is initiated through Sage and Tech planning in either case. I'll show you how that works when we get into the demo. Imagine if you will, creating a budget from scratch where we use the data from a given period that is in your Sage and Tech Core financials. Take that data, make changes to it, share it with other key stakeholders, and quickly and easily have a budget. As you can see on the slide, whatever information that is in your core financial general ledger, you'll have the opportunity to enter budgets on those dimensions. Keep in mind that if there are accounts in Sage and Tech that are not in Sage and Tech planning, you'll automatically be prompted during the import process to map these items into Sage and Tech planning. And then the export function works similarly to the import. You'll see that one can create a new budget with all the accounts and dimensions mapped appropriately. 
You also have the option of mapping new dimensions that don't exist in your Sage Intact. For example, if you want to budget on a line item that does not exist, just like the import function, you'll automatically be prompted to map those during the export process. When we talk about financial planning and analysis, this, this, excuse me, this tool stands out by including a crucial element. You know, that, that financial planning and analysis, when I was a CFO and using Excel to manage my budgets, we typically spent about two to three months on creating budgets for the following fiscal year. And once that budget was approved, we spent the remainder of the year just looking at the budget to actual and you know, analysis. With this added fp and element, we're providing the finance team with tools that can help with strategic planning, forecasting, and analysis. It serves as a link between the organization's overall strategy, its financial resources, and its operational execution. The financial planning and analysis tool improves visibility by helping your organization understand critical financial issues and opportunities. It helps you respond to market and organizational changes and influence in, to inform the senior leaders, the board members, or the department heads by giving them a better understanding of how financing and resources are being utilized. It will allow you to drive change throughout the organization. Sage and Tech Planning is the complete planning solution for your organization's success. I'm not gonna go line by line on this slide. I wanted to just include it to give you a summary of the benefits. You can see here, there are lots of things that'll make your organization be, operate more efficiently. For me, I believe the, the benefits that stand out are the advanced modeling, what if scenarios, and the rolling forecasts, because I believe that's what's taking the budgeting or, or really the planning process in the, in, the, in the budgeting process into that next level, okay? All right, now we're gonna go into the demo. So let me just go ahead and just show you here. So right now I am in the Sage and Tech Planning tool. And there are a couple of menus here up on top that I wanna just bring your awareness to. We've got your dashboard, your sheets, your inputs and actuals. And here on this dashboard, you also see there's a menu here with, the, the, uh, with some uh, uh, filters that you can filter different information. And again, the items that appear here are gonna be the items that mimic your Sage and Tech Core financials. So whatever dimensions you're using in your Sage and Tech Core, you'll see them here on, as options to filter information. Okay, so whether it's departments, locations, you'll have whether it's, uh, you know, different items, you'll, the way that you name them will be the name that you'll see them here. Okay, so lots of way for you to limit the information that you're looking at if you want to do it by items or if you want to do it by, you know, again, departments or location, uh, projects, funding, all of those things are opportunities for you to uh, look at the information the way that's appropriate for your organization. Okay, so. I want to show you the syncing process and in terms of creating a budget, it's just as simple as creating a new budget and it'll walk you through a, a wizard process that will either allow you to use your Sage and Tech data or upload an existing Sage and Tech planning file, or you can upload by using an Excel file. Very easy to do. It walks you through a wizard process, about 10 to 13 steps, depending on how your dimensions are set up in your Sage and Tech core. Okay, so in a few minutes, you can have a budget that already is ready to begin based on those numbers that you have from, let's say, last year. Okay, while I'm up here going over these menus, I just want to also show you how easy it is to integrate. Once you have a budget in your Sage Intact planning tool, it's easy enough for you to click on this connect to Sage Intact. And this is what I was mentioning on uh, just a few moments ago. I can simply click and type in my email, uh, my, uh, my, uh, uh, password, and it'll give me an opportunity to bring the data back and forth. And I just want to show you that if I go into, I've also logged into my Sage and Tech core. And so what this will allow me to do is once the budgets are brought over, I can go into my Sage and Tech core and go into my budgets area, and I will see all of the budgets that I have brought over. So depending on what scenario, if you have a best case scenario, you might have a worst case scenario, uh, you might have some different items that you wanna look at a different way so that you're, when you're doing your reporting and bringing different budgets, you have that opportunity once they're in this repository, then when you're building your financial statements, if let's say I go into my dashboards, 
I can see here now I'm looking at a you know particular financial statement. I can also see, you can see here, I can click on a particular column. And if I want to drill down further on a particular item, I can do that, click further and further. And notice that what it's doing now is that it's going to open up another tab on my browser that allows me to look at that particular item that I was just interested in. Okay, so you see that that's the bi-directional integration between. So you'll have that opportunity to look at it from the Sage Intact Core or also see it from, from Sage Intact Planning because you also have that option to bring in the actuals uh, from Sage Intact. Uh, let me just show you this. These are the options. I just want to show you the options that are available here. So uh, just like you said, uh, import actuals from Sage Intact, export my budget back into Sage Intact, and then we also have the opportunity of importing statistical uh, data. Okay, so very easy to do, and you, once you're connected, you can work on them seamlessly. Okay, so now I am in my. Uh, I'm gonna just switch my budget here, just to go to. You can have multiple budgets, as you can see here. I have plenty here to work with. Uh, so you're not limited to the uh, anything in, specifically, if you will. Uh, I'll stay in this one for now. Uh, and, and what I want to show you here is once I go into these items, you'll see the budget tree on this left hand side. Let me just cancel this because I'm in a, in a scenario, which I'll get to in a moment. <clears throat> Oops. Uh, hang on one second. Uh, my computer's acting kind of weird today. Here we go. <laughs> All right, so I am in my in my Sage and Tech planning, and I've got my environment. And so on the left hand side, you can see the budget tree, and it all depends on how you got again those dimensions that are set up. If I collapse these, you can see that this one in particular I have done by location, and then within each location, I can see. Uh, the revenues, cost of revenues and operational expenses. And then if I expand this even further, I can see things like my department because this is how I've set up my, my budget tree, okay? Within each one of these, I, I can break this down further. So if I, this is a group, for example, in this department, I can break it down. I've got salaries and admin. I've got all my line items that you typically see in a budget. And so if I click on one of these, just to show you, as I click on this, this landing page is going to uh, really define the information that I want to uh, present for this budget. I want to bring your attention up here to where it says budget type, and we've got different types in here, and I'll go over a few of them in a moment. But here I've got the opportunity to create this budget. I can uh, change the amounts, and as I change any of these amounts, you'll see that this gets updated. As soon as I do that, you can see that these items update. Okay, And I can do this by month or once a year, quarterly, annually. I can also choose to do the same amount each month, or I could use a growth percentage. So with the growth, I'll be able to type in a base amount and then type in the, the percent that I want it to grow, and then each month it'll calculate that amount based on that percentage. As I scroll down, I have additional opportunities to create a budget. Here's that my date range. You're not limited in terms of the date range that you that we have here. You can expand this to expand the budget. If I keep scrolling down, I've got an opportunity to see the dimensions. Again, whatever dimensions you have in your Sage and Tech Core, we'll be able to see them here. You've got the opportunity to do allocations either by headcount by simply clicking on this button or unchecking it and allowing me to allocate based on a percentage that I choose. Okay, you have that uh, flexibility to do that. As I scroll down, a lot of people always ask me about uh, cash forecasting. We can accommodate cash forecasting, and it is done by the activity in your P&L. And so what will happen here? Now, in this case, I'm looking at, a, at an expense account, but if we were looking at a revenue account, we would have the opportunity to say when we're going to pay this amount or uh, in terms of percentages, or if it was a revenue item, if you're expecting the revenue in the second or third month, you can put the percentages there. And what this will allow the, the system to do is to come up with a, a cash forecast based on these percentages, okay? Uh, and so, and as I keep going down, you have opportunities to do comments. This is very important here 
where uh, it's a threaded comment. And from a sharing perspective, when you share this budget with people, which I'll show you in a moment, people can put in their support or their assumptions their, uh, for why they're choosing these kinds of items. And then if anybody's looking at it to approve it, they can see that threaded comment. Okay, taking you through the shared area here, I can simply click on the share and I've got the opportunity to share a particular budget. Now, in this case, I'm sharing the full budget, but and I, all I have to do here is type in the name, uh, the email address, and I can either give them either view only or modification rights by simply choosing these. And then here's the feature that I love the best is uh, this advanced feature that uh, gives you additional options. Uh, but what I love is the opportunity to exclude certain lines. Uh, I know for me, again, uh, I, I, I didn't want to share salary information with, with some of my uh, budget uh, stakeholders. And so I can come in here and decide that I don't want to include any of my salary and wages information. So now this person that's going to get access to this budget will not see any of these uh, items that relate to salary and wages. And you can have additional items here. All you have to do is keep check, uh, keep clicking on the ones that you want, and it'll it'll keep excluding them. Okay. Throughout the system, you'll also see these little information icons, which are very helpful to give you information about that particular function. So easy. All you have to do is fly over them. And it'll give you some details about that function. Okay. I also want to mention that in this case, I am sharing the full budget, but I also just want to show you that. Remember how I said that in this tree area, I have gotten, uh, you know, I've got the opportunity to look at a particular, in this case, location, or maybe even department. I could potentially, since right now I'm, I am in the general and admin department of the SPC East location, I could potentially just share just that part of the budget with that department head. And notice up here, it's saying just sharing general and admin. Again, all I have to do is type in the email address. And then in the excluding, I can also, again, decide that I don't want them to see information. I can exclude information that's specific, uh, you know, that, that's appropriate or inappropriate. Okay. So very easy to share and collaborate with people. Okay. <clears throat> okay. There's also a help feature, which allow, has plenty of videos for you to review. If you have any questions, that'll take you through it. Okay. So I want to show you a couple of other things. I mentioned here in the office supplies where I showed you this budget type that is really in this case just says expense. Well, we also have an opportunity to type in, let's say uh, we have a derived expense. So there's one of the options here. If I go to conferences, uh, let's say, or maybe consulting expenses, let's say we have uh, an expense that is derived from something else. And so in this case, what we're saying is, okay, well, I want you to come up with this conference and events expense, but I want you to derive it from something else. And so you've got this opportunity to choose calculate using, and I've got the option to choose the particular item that is available that has data in it from another budget line, and then simply decide that, hey, what's my percentage? Type in the percentage that I want, and it'll automatically calculate the item for me. So there are lots of things here that, what I like to say are set it and forget it, <laughs> where uh, you don't have to worry about certain things. So I, I know that when I used to uh, build these budgets, you know, there's lots of things that you need to keep in mind. And so by creating some of these items here, you don't have to worry about uh, forgetting about them. Uh, same thing with, uh, I have another example, if we have, let's say a per new employee expense. So let's say that we're gearing up a particular department and, um, and inevitably there's gonna be some expenses that are uh, you know, appropriate to when new employees start, whether it's getting new laptops or uh, you know, costs for setting up an office, whatever. And the idea is that whenever we have a new employee, I want the budget to include certain items. So I can create this category that is per new employee. And then anytime I have a new employee, it'll add these expenses in there as well. Okay, so again, it's one of those things where I feel like there's lots of tools in here that once you set them up, it's part of that setup. You set it up in the beginning and, and you don't have to think about it anymore and you can feel confident that those things are being captured. Okay, and so there's a whole bunch more others in here. I'll show you another one in a moment from the models, uh, but I wanted to at least kind of show you that, that aspect of it. Okay, uh, another item here, <clears throat> 
<coughs> excuse me, is if we look at salaries and wages, I can see here that I can list all of my employees. Okay, and now with each one of these employees, I have the opportunity to put in their role. And now a lot of this information can come from your Sage and Tech Core, but again, uh, you'll be able to budget on an individual line item that isn't necessarily in your general ledger, and then have these items roll up on your salary and wages line uh, on your financials. So in this case, you have opportunities to type in the base salary, you have can put a, a percentage in for benefits, employment taxes, bonuses, anything like that, that again, is one of those things, once you set them up, you can feel confident that they're being captured. There's also an opportunity to do added benefits. Uh, so for example, if we have, let's say a sign-on bonus, I went to another employee here, where you can, let's say you wanna do a sign-on bonus for any new employee, you can set that up and look at that and have, a, have an opportunity to do that based on a percentage. And then here, if I look at the detail, I can see that my benefits for this particular person, the benefits, the taxes, the bonus, any sign-on bonus, all of that will be reflected as part of the budget. Okay, uh, another thing while I'm here is to show you that while I'm looking at this tree area here, uh, and you can make all these changes here, you can also see this information under tables where I can see all of my employees, sort of like in an Excel format, if you will, where I can add an employee, I can see all the information about each employee, make some changes. If they're in different, uh, if I wanna apply them to different dimensions, I can do that. I can also filter out by different departments or location, depending on the dimensions uh, of your Sage and Tech Core, okay? And similarly, I'm gonna go back to inputs and back into my main here and show you that there's also an opportunity here on the upper right-hand area where you can see grid entry. I can simply click on this and now I can see my budget tree in that format. Again, having that opportunity that I showed you earlier in the dashboards where you can limit the information based on the filtering that's available from your Sage and Tech core, okay? And so making changes by simply clicking on, on these items and it'll open up um, a tab that allow me to make some changes to those particular line items, okay? So depending on how you wanna work on your budget, you have that opportunity to do that. Uh, you, we've got some options that'll make it easier for you uh, that uh, will uh, make just make it easier for you, okay? Now, what I've shown you so far really is the basic of you know how, how the tool works and if you're using Excel, this part of it can uh, definitely replace what's in, in your what you're doing in Excel, except that you, you're now identifying or, or at least uh, reducing some of the risks of the formula issues, having that one source of truth, uh, collaborative, you know, being able to collaborate with people that that and really at the connected feature. The part that I think is going to set this apart from using Excel is this, what I would call like what I mentioned in the uh, FP&A, the, the, the planning, the, the planning part is really what's gonna set it apart. And so in this area here under models, and I'm actually gonna just switch to uh, another database so that I can show you some models that I've created. Now, the idea with the models is that it, it's, it, it allows you to create things um, that will drive the budget line items. So for example, here I've got, uh, you know, I've got some models here that, that allow me to enter some assumptions. So I've got some assumptions about pricing, uh, you know, daily rates and things like that, you know, per person pricing, all of these things are assumptions. And then what this tool allows you to do is that you can create a model that, that really just takes those assumptions and multiplies them by you know, whatever inputs that you're interested in. So if we know that there are certain uh, things that you wanted to know, if you wanted to know what your occupancy rate is, you can create a formula that will take those items into consideration. Um, and you can, and every line that you do, depending on how much revenue you wanna make, notice down here, there is, you, you can potentially decide that, okay, well now my revenue is gonna be linked on assumption that, you know, based on my occupancy rate, that will be multiplied by the, the rate and you know my assumption about how many rooms are gonna be uh, used. And then notice that it says linked in here, right? That means that I have linked this to my budget line item. And so if, if, I am, if 
I want to make some changes to these assumptions, all I have to do is change my, you know, my rate or my gross percentage. Um, you know, any one of these items are things that you can change. And, and where this comes in handy is that you can create a scenario. And, and before I talk about scenarios, I just want to show you a couple other things where, again, creating these models is, is going to be where you, where it takes this to that, to that planning level where we're not just doing budget to actual analysis anymore. We're actually thinking ahead where, we're, you know, I, I used to think that I used to do this a lot of times in my head, but this is a more formal process where it's all in one area. And think about it if you were sitting in a budget meeting and, uh, and you know, you present your budget and now you're someone says, well, what if I change some, uh, you know, some information? What does my what you know, what will that do to my overall financial uh, statement? And so by creating a, a scenario. You can create this, you know, best case scenario, or uh, again, if, I, if I'm going to increase rates, I can click on this. And when you create a, a scenario, it takes a complete copy of your budget and places it into this scenario area where you can then make changes. And then all of those changes are going to be tracked uh, in this scenario. And then you'll be able to go into the sheets area, which is really where the reporting happens. And be able to say, okay, well, I made these changes, but now how does that reflect or how can I see that against my budget? So there's a, a filter here that allows me to go ahead and click on that. And now I can see, and if I expand this, I can see all of the changes or you know what's going to happen if I if this scenario comes to fruition, right? This is an opportunity to look at, well, if we if our assumptions are correct, this is what our total you know, revenue is going to look like. Uh, you know, and then and then you can decide if this is the path that you want to go. And once you do that, all you have to do is come back in here and just decide that, OK, you know what? We like this scenario. We we think it's going to work. It's our best case and simply merge it with the budget. And then once it's merged with the budget, it's part of your budget. And then from there, again, uh, when you're bringing it back into your Sage and Tech Core, you'll be able to do you know that that really that advanced. Uh, custom reporting. Uh, so you can have multiple budgets out there. One of them might be your, your best case. You might have an approved budget. And then along the line, you might have modifications depending on how you're responding to the market or, uh, or you know, just, just responding to organizational needs. If you had some turnover, what does that look like? All of those things are things that you can look at. And, and really, I say it, it brings that, that budgeting role into that other level of you're not just budgeting anymore. Now we're, we're, we're being proactive by looking at changes, by, by deciding, OK, well, if something's going to happen, this is the best case where we think this is going to happen. Uh, you'll, you have that opportunity to, to do that very easily and share those, those kinds of scenarios. Similarly, I have a lot of clients that use these scenarios when they're sharing their budget with other budget stakeholders. So uh, remember how I said you can share all of these with, with people from uh, you know, other department heads. They can create a scenario, put all of their changes in, and then have the person that is approved to, to, uh, to approve the budget look at it and decide, you know what, after I've seen uh, all of these changes, I've seen all the, all the notes or the comments that support those changes, they can go ahead and, and make those changes in there and, and, and apply them to the budget. Okay, so very easy. Again, that that connected feature, that collaborative feature, all of those things are powerful. These driver based models take that budgeting role to that next level. Okay, a couple more things that I want to show you is that you can also I'm just going to get out of here. You can also create the forecasting features by just going into this history area here and I can create a snapshot or I can create a forecast and and decide at any point if I ever want to go back to these uh, versions of the budget I could simply do that by just clicking coming into this history and and reverting back to that particular version okay you can also again you can save as many of these budgets as you wish bring them over to your sage and tech core uh, you know review them bring them back in any way that you want you can have these multiple budgets in here that allow you to really look at your budget uh, at your organization from all these different perspectives okay all right uh, over here I also have actuals where you can look at your actuals that have come in uh, I may not have any in here uh, hang on. 
I'm going to just switch. Oh, okay, I'm going to switch back to my other budget. Hang on one second. Uh, so the actuals, anytime you're looking at, if you're, if you're looking at a particular line item, for example, if you want to look at uh, a, a specific line, let's say, again, we'll go back to transportation. If I want to look at uh, budget versus past data, I can see that past data from here. Um, I can also come in here and actuals and see the summary, or I can see details on the P&L, which accounts are, are uh, you know, affecting the budget. Uh, you, you have the opportunity to look at your balance sheet. And also, if, depending on if you're working with uh, other organizations, I'm sorry, not, not other organizations, but if you have multiple uh, currency, we support that as well. So you can have a budget in US dollars, and then you can have other budgets in, in other currency. And then as long as you put in your exchange rates, you'll have the opportunity to present that budget in whatever exchange rate that you're looking for. Okay, you can type in the uh, monthly exchange rates, you can use a set rate throughout the month, or you could use uh, uh, individual months, uh, whatever whatever is appropriate for your organization. Okay, all right, so again, think about it. If you've ever had to use this uh, you know, in the past, or I'm sorry, if you didn't have this in the past and you're, you're using Excel, uh, I mean, I still laugh. I, I think about all the versions that I've had, um, you know, uh, in Excel, uh, operating budget, final version two, revision six, update three. <laughs> um, that was a nightmare to manage. So this is a great benefit of having it all in one source of truth. Um, you know, that, that collaborative feature, having the people go in there, giving and feeling confident that, nothing's getting messed up uh, the, the formulas are correct all of those things are things that can make your life easier uh, and give you a little bit more opportunity to think strategically versus being in that uh in the weeds of, of, of actual formulas and looking at all of that information at that kind of level okay all right folks this is supposed to be a high level demo i hope that i've enticed you enough to be more curious on how this tool can you know help your budgeting and planning functions um, uh, you know, please reach out to your partner if you have any questions or, or next steps. Um, I am just going to ask my colleague if, uh, if there are any questions, if they're uh, unanswered, I, I can show you if there's anything else. Uh, Craig, was there anything else that uh, has come up? I mean, if you want, uh, if you have time, do you want to show the difference between setting up a, a bonus in the employee directly, but also the functionality within the advanced benefits. Okay, yes. So you can also, uh, I, so where I went just now was under the advanced benefit. And by just simply clicking on add a benefit, I've got the opportunity to add that benefit. Okay, so you can choose whether it's gonna be, in this case, let's say if we chose whatever benefits, if it's percentage for salary, or you want a particular amount, you can choose that. Uh, when it occurs, whether it's monthly, again, some of those items that you see that we've seen throughout the system, percentages, uh, let's say I put in a percent, I can also put in the maximum amount, payment after, you've got that opportunity. Then you can also apply it to, excuse me, to all employees or maybe specific employees in the sense of uh, what location they're in, you can do that, or by department or by location. And then, and then apply it, uh, I'm gonna just cancel here. And just like we saw, I'm gonna cancel here. Uh, go back to my inputs, main. And then uh, just like I showed you here, I've got this added benefit. So this one's gonna be added for that sign-on bonus because I've added, but again, if you don't do it from, from where I just showed you in the settings area, you can also add it from here. Okay, so very easy to manage from that perspective. Anything else? No, that's it. All right. Thank you all for joining. Uh, this recording it will be made available. Uh, I'm uh, I, I, I'm not sure where exactly right now, but if you contact, work with your partner, uh, or if you have any questions, please reach out. I'd be glad to help you and answer uh, anything that you need, or if there's something specific that uh, that is specific to your organization, I'd be glad to help. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Hope you have a great day.